it's just great to be here and to see everyone in person. Last night um, was an amazing event, as usual. Uh, Jerry, you knocked it out of the park. I don't know who picks the venues for these uh, events, but every single one of them has just been amazing and sets the tone for a very relaxing day and a very day for us to interact and talk about, about the science. So we have a really, a very rich history of uh, over the last uh, six and a half, seven years, eight years if you count, the uh, kickoff meeting that, that we had. And I think almost everyone that was at that original meeting is here, is here today. We've been in Rome and, and uh, Barcelona, Paris, um, Chicago, back here in Chicago. And uh, we had now two virtual meetings over the past, uh, the past two years. The venues have been great but also the speakers that we've had have been absolutely uh, astounding. I mean, Dr. Brownwald, Joe Hill, Val Fuster, Jim Udelson, Doug Mann, Emma Burks, Clyde Yancey, how can you top that, uh, that list? Well, there's only one way, is uh, we have this year, uh, Beacom uh, Oscard, Boscard, who's gonna give us um, the lecture today, the, uh, the, the, uh, featured, the featured lecture. So uh, thank you, Beacom, for being here. And, um, and for continuing on this, uh, this tradition. Um, so um, ACURE, as you all know, um, celebrates uh, all the research that has been sponsored over the last uh, more than 10 years, actually, that looking into the science of, of unloading. Um, these are just some of the logos, but these are just, these are just logos. There's a huge amount of science and um, blood, sweat, and tears, if you will, into behind this. Uh, we talk about some of these pivotal studies that are ongoing, door to unload, um, the, which is now almost halfway enrolled, protect kidney, venous HF with precardia, looking at a different form of unloading, unloading the kidney, impact using uh, the Impella 5.5 um, in patients with uh, low EFs un undergoing cardiac surgery, using Impella as an enabler for other high-risk procedures. Um, and the smart, smart pump study starting to use the mechanical support devices as a diagnostic tool. So enhancing um, using, using the devices um, actually to, to give us more information about are we unloading, how much are we unloading, do we need to unload, do we need to unload more? Well, we talk about unloading um, here, but you know, we have also provided some formal definitions of what unloading are, and this is, it's never easy to provide a formal definition of something that you know is, encompasses so much. But years ago, we as a group defined unloading as the reduction of total mechanical power expenditure of the ventricle, which correlates with reductions in myocardial oxygen consumption and hemodynamic forces that lead to ventricular remodeling. So we're talking about hemodynamic factors, we're talking about metabolic factors, and we're also talking about the structural inhibition of the, of the process that leads to ventricular, ventricular remodeling. And it's really, it starts with the unloaded, the hemodynamic unloading, which you see here on the left side of the screen with the, uh, on, on the pressure volume domain, taking a heart that is, let's say, an infarcted heart or a heart in, in chronic heart failure, which is, has a high load, a high preload, a high afterload, and uh, physically unloading that, unloading the ventricle. And on the right side here, you see the metabolic aspects where we're, take, we're reducing the work that the heart's doing, and that correlates with a reduction in the myocardial oxygen consumption. These are just two, two aspects of, um, of unloading that are very evident. And another aspect, especially in the setting of myocardial infarction and shock, where patients are being treated with inotropes, what we've learned from, from Bill O'Neill's work with the NCSI is that w w when we unload the ventricle and we can maintain cardiac output, blood pressure and wedge pressure with a mechanical device, take over for the work of the heart, you have the possibility to decrease the inotropes and pressors. And um, when you can withdraw um, with inotropes, pressors, and reduce the, uh, the side effects of those drugs in terms of their effects on contractility and heart rate and workload, we have a, the possibility to further decrease the myocardial oxygen consumption. And all of these things, we believe, um, really uh, contribute to reductions in myocardial injury and also to a, um, a prevention of the remodeling process that occurs following, uh, following an acute insult. 
And it's much more than just mechanics and me me metabolism and oxygen consumption. And we've learned so much from the work that was started by Bart Maines and, and really carried forward by Naveen uh, to look at the cardioprotective effects of unloading, the um, activation of cardioprotective signaling with various, um, with various pathways that are activated. So that, that are summarized uh, in here, it goes beyond, even beyond that, looking at how unloading the ventricle improves microvascular function, improves microvascular perfusion to further reduce infarct size, um, and how these, um, th these types of devices that unload the ventricle can bridge uh, through reperfusion-induced myocardial stunning. So there, the um, unloading, uh, again, just really encompasses so much more than just hemodynamics. Um, and it's really through the uh, work of everyone in this room that we've uh, advanced this science to the point where these concepts are being advanced in the clinical, in the clinical arena to actually improve outcomes in patients. There's been a, also a growing appreciation for the role of unloading in multiple things, not only through the use of uh, not only through the use of, uh, of mechanical support devices, but thinking about renal unloading, um, as we'll, we'll hear about when we hear about the precardia, um, invasive monitoring to further understand and quantify the degree of unloading that a patients are, are uh, experiencing, uh, catheter-based uh, ventricular remodeling devices that are, again, intended to unload the, the ventricle, unload the myocardium, and induce this process of reverse remodeling. Um, and again, we'll hear uh, several talks about venous, uh, about the renal unloading, and it really all comes down to the same, uh, to the same kind of concepts. So this year, um, at, our, at our sessions, we've got uh, four uh, sessions, uh, advances in biological, bi uh, the basics of preclinical science of acute unloading and recovery, clinical science and evidence of cardiac unloading and recovery, emerging trials and clinical application of cardiac unloading, and frontiers in um, surgical and clinical applications of unloading. A very, very rich and diverse um, set of, uh, of sessions and a very diverse set of, uh, of, uh, of uh, talks within each session. And as I've already mentioned, we're really, really fortunate that Beacon Boscart um, Boscart has uh, agreed to come and talk to us today, and she's going to talk to us about um, uh, decompensated heart failure, taking the acute out of decompensation, and I think that we'll, we'll all uh, really look forward to your talk, Beacom. So we have 18 original talks, we have three panel discussions, and also this year a new feature for those of you who are interested, we have CME uh, accredit accreditation.